анонсовать. All right, yes, we are live here on the webinar platform and also uh, on our SME Banking TV. So welcome to the webinar. My name is Olena Grinyuk. I'm the CE Director at the SME Banking Club and I will host today's webinar. And uh, today we speak about how the usage of data from the financial documents and transactional data helps to provide better service to the SME segment customers. My guest today is uh, Krzysztof Pulkiewicz, Financial Institutions Partnership Manager at Unified Post. Krzysztof, welcome. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for uh, having me here. Yeah, sure. And yeah, let, just before we start, let me very shortly mention uh, the organizational information. So we plan our webinar for 40 minutes. Uh, we will start from the presentation and right after, in the second part of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session. So please type your questions in the chat uh, whenever you would like, even during the presentation. And so we will read them uh, during the Q&A session. And so we are recording this webinar, so right after we finish, you will receive the link uh, to the video. So uh, this is it from the organizational uh, points of view, and let's go to our topic at once. Krzysztof, I'm passing a mic to you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, once again, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to work with the SME Banking Club. I had a pleasure to present on different conferences some uh, few years ago in Milano and Krakow. It's always yes. a great experience. So I'm really glad to be to Pleasure by our side as well. Thank you. So uh, before we will start, let me just give you a short overview of uh, of my experience and um, um, my 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 journey working with the different banks. So I'm playing a role of the partnership manager at Unified Post Group. I will talk a little bit more about the group in the, in the next slide. I was also a founder of Banka, uh, which was acquired by Unified Post in 2021. Um, BankUp was the SME banking platform that was also presented to SME Banking Club uh, in Milan 20, 20, 2020. And, uh, but in general, I have uh, more than 15 years experience working with uh, financial sector institutions, with the banks, with different roles. Uh, previously as an Accenture consultant, then as a fintech entrepreneur, uh, I was also playing a role of the uh, chief security officer at AXA in CU region. Um, during those 15 years, I had the pleasure to work with different banks from different geographies, uh, including uh, largest banks in Poland, like PKOBP, Pekao, uh, also the KBC Group in different countries, Banco Santander in Spain, BMP, Credit Agricole, and also Alpha Bank in, uh, in Ukraine and Belarus. So I, um, and most of the focus was, was really on the SME, uh, how to use the data, how to use the different uh, regulations and how to actually improve and build the uh, effective ecosystems of the SME oriented services. Uh, now I'm uh, with Unified Post. Unified Post is uh, one of the leading fintechs in Europe. Uh, that was, uh, the company was established in 2001. Uh, currently, we have more than um, uh, 1,300 employees in 22 countries. In general, we provide the services to SMEs. We have uh, more than 1 million SMEs in our network using our apps and our solutions. We also work for the large corporates, um, corporate clients, including banks, and we have more than 2,500 clients in our, our portfolio. Uh, basically, uh, we have three pillars of uh, what we do. So documents especially invoicing identity and payments we are the fully fledged financial institution uh, passportized to more than 25 countries in uh, in europe okay and the, the goal for today's presentation is to uh, in the first part to go very short to go uh, through the different scenarios how banks are using different technologies using different solutions to actually get more insights about the SME customers to obtain more information and how to use this information to better serve the SME, SME segment customers. So we will start with the basic scenario. Uh, but before that, I put here three major objectives in 
my personal opinion, three major objectives, why banks are actually investing, why they are developing the SME uh, value, uh, value added services. So first, as I mentioned before, is to gain a better insight, to get a better understanding of the, of the business, the uh, better understanding of the current financial situation, uh, not only for the better uh, credit scoring, but also to provide more tailor-made offering and uh, in-time support. This is very important. Uh, second is obviously in, to increase the royalty uh, and by providing more and more uh, products and uh, became a bank of choice. So if I need a new product, if I, my business requires a new financial solution, I will have my banks and I expect that the bank provides wide variety of the products that I can use for my business. And uh, last but not least is also to generate the incremental revenue streams, especially you know, when, the, when the fees for the current accounts, the business accounts are lowering. Uh, banks needs to must actually look for the incremental revenue streams, but I still believe that the main objective is the the first one to gain the better insight and to obtain more information about the SME customers. So let's take a look at the very standard scenario. So in a very standard scenario, we have uh, our SME customer, uh, which is the sole trader company or like a small business which is using self-accounting service and at the same time is using uh, online banking service and those two are completely separated. So uh, banks and the uh, bank, and this is this blue, blue, blue box here, um, is actually aware only about the transactions which are happening on the account, which is held by, by this bank and has no, un, no view on what is the current account receivable aging, what are the, uh, what are the, money flows between customers, vendors, and our clients. So this is very limited scope of the information. The same situation, and this is very important um, uh, when we will discuss the, 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 the solutions in the, in the next slides. Uh, majority of the still small businesses, but also medium or uh, let's say large businesses, they are not using the self accounting service. They are using the external accountant which is actually running all those bookkeeping activities, tax, uh, HR, payroll activities for them. And in general, those accountants are still using their own software and there is strict separation between what is accounting and what is banking. So based on the PSD2 payment service directive, which is in force for a couple of years already, some banks decided to actually increase the number of information increase the scope of the information they have about their clients by offering the aggregation services to um, actually allow the sme customers to manage accounts from different banks in the one place so on one hand it's very convenient very handy for the customer because they can actually see their cash position in one place they can manage their um, their money flows much easier but also for a bank bank pro uh, is provided with a more insights about what all what is also happening on other accounts what uh, what are the other financial products that the customer have a uh, customer has in uh, in other banks so based on the open banking solution like uh, api hub we are offering the aggregate and um, the open banking aggregator solution platform bank is, uh, is uh, can get more insights not only from their accounts but also from the accounts from other from other banks so this is the first step and some banks already uh, already offering such a service. Um, just a few examples. So we have, for example, Santander or VeloBank, which are using the open banking services for two different purposes. Uh, Santander is using it and allowing their customers to see accounts from other banks, both in the web and the mobile app. Uh, VeloBank, for example, is using the open banking data to provide their customers with the credit scoring and also automate payments. One of the first banks in uh, in, a, in European Union that offered the uh, open banking services and the account aggregation uh, for the SME customers was a Danske Bank. And they did it for the first time, allowing, as I said before, SMEs to see different accounts from different banks in one single case. So this is about the open banking. Then 
as we know already, many banks, they started to offer and actually move the self-accounting, self-service accounting services as a part of the online, uh, online banking. So the, 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 the idea here was that the customer who's using the uh, web banking, they will be using the self-service accounting in the one place. So we have a customer, the customer is actually using the one single platform, both for the financials, the, the banking services, but also for accounting services. And therefore bank, uh, because the, it has an access to, or possible access to the, to the, uh, to the documents data, a uh, bank can reach more 360 view of the customer. So automatically by providing this service, bank is able to better understand the SME business and provide better, uh, better service. Um, similar case for the customers which are not doing the self-service bookkeeping, but also but, but using the external accountants. So some banks, I will give you an example in a second, they, 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 they are offering the external accounting office services as a part of the, of the SME service ecosystem. Um, so on one hand, it provides a lot of benefits, both from the SME and also for a bank, especially um, by getting a better insight and um, getting more information about the current real-time situation of the, of the SME. Uh, two examples like MBank, one of the first who provided uh, such a service for the, uh, to the market and uh, ING. Um, so those two banks in Poland, they are offering the service, uh, including the external uh, accounting office chains. So if you are doing self-accounting or you are using external accountant, you can use the service from uh, those two banks. Um, in the US, TD Bank, um, they they are working together with Autobooks, Raiffeisen Bank. They even established their own like a startup uh, who's offering the invoicing solution as a part of the um, online bank. So as we said before, the online accounting service, which is provided by bank as a part of the web banking or mobile banking, provides the bank with a great opportunity to better understand the SME, to offer more real-time products. Uh, and better understand the potential scoring. But at the same time, there are two major challenges we see. And also those challenges are in many cases, the reason that the adoption of such a service is it's not uh, the one um, everyone would expect. So first challenge is that it's really hard to convince the SME customer, especially existing business, not the new business, to actually switch from the uh, from current solution, it can be self-service, it can be external accounting office, to the solution offered by bank. So moving to the new platform is very complex. Uh, it requires a lot of work, continuity, continuity effort, and so on, so on. So this is this is the main challenge, and this is the reason many SMEs didn't actually decide to start using the service provided by their banks. The second challenge is that we are living in a very dynamic uh reality of changing the taxation changing the, the, the tax law and so on so on so if you are maintaining this service you need to be sure that it's always compliant and it provides the service which is in line with the, with the current regulations so this is very complex and this is very costly so in order to uh complete the picture, we also uh, have some banks which are offering the external services, for example, Bank App Platform, which is provided by Unified Post, as a solution for just the invoicing. So invoicing. So uh, the, the, the SME customer can use the external application, which is offered by bank or with the cooperation with the bank to uh, issue the invoices and manage the account receivables, account payables. Here we are talking about the situation where uh, we do not have the invoicing yet uh, active in the, in the country. So the external application is providing OCR uh, services, which allows the customer, SME customer, to actually convert the, uh, convert the uh, standard invoices, the pictures or PDF documents into the structured data and uh, exchange these structured documents with their accountants or with the self-service accounting platform. So in, in general, we see 
several examples on the market where this service is actually offered as a part of the SME banking ecosystem. And then we arrive to the point of the e invoicing. And um, my true belief is that the e invoicing is the game changer, and uh, invoicing can, and if used properly, can actually provide the bank with a similar set of benefits with, uh, with the easier and more expensive cost of maintaining the solution and uh, keeping, it, uh, keeping it compliant. Before we will enter, uh, let's focus a bit on what is the intention, what is the root cause of the invoicing and uh, how it's evolving uh, in the European Union. So uh, invoicing is more like transition from the post audit model, where actually the seller and buyer, they need to report all their registered invoices, account receivables, account payables to the tax, tax authorities to more real time, we call it continuous transaction control model, where the invoice which is issued and the invoice which is received by the, by the buyer is actually in the real time reported to the tax authorities. Uh, and the tax authorities can see those documents and the, and the, and the business flows in the real time. Obviously, we have uh, different models and uh, depends on the country, depends on how different uh, countries implemented the invoicing. We have an uh, interoperability model, we have centralized model where there is a one single place where the invoice needs to be reported in the real time or post uh, activity. We have a clearance model and, um, and we have, uh, as, uh, as an example here in France, we have a DCTCE model where there is a regulated part and there is a standardization part where there are the um, organizations which are certified to connect the suppliers and buyers with the, with the, with the tax, uh, tax authorities. So we have a different models and um, which makes it very complex for the especially international businesses to understand how to be compliant with the different invoicing solutions and how to provide uh, invoices to different parts of the European Union. And as we can see on this list, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's fully visible, uh, invoicing is actually happening now. So we have more and more countries which are in the testing period, like Poland. We have more and more countries where invoicing is already in force, like Romania. Uh, uh, we have some delays, again, Poland, Germany and Spain, but in general, we can assume that for the next three, four years, invoicing will become uh, a reality in most of the parties of the, of the European Union. So let's take a look how the bank can actually uh, benefit from the invoicing and how to use it in a proper way to um, realize the objective that I mentioned the first and the first, one of the first slides. First of all, um, bank can help the SME customer to connect their account receivables, account payables, and their accounting platform with the invoicing. So bank can offer the third party solution like bank app from Unified Post to allow them easy issuing and receiving the invoices. Okay, so in this case, the solution is always compliant and the third party is um, is uh, in, irresponsible for uh, changing the solution according to the changes in the in the local local legislation uh, one of the examples here is the um, the Raiffeisen bank which is offering third party service from uh, from unified post uh, the other example is to use the data which is already the structured information about the invoices and to implement the similar concept as we have for the open banking. In this case, bank needs to convince the SME customer to give and to provide the consent to access, read only access to their documents and use this information and monitor those documents data for the credit scoring, pre-approvals, pre onboarding, different purposes. So in this case, the 
what is important here, SME customer is still using the same accounting service, the same self-accounting or the same accountant with the same platform. Uh, nothing has changed here. But if there is a proper value proposition for the, uh, from the bank, the SME customer can give an access, give a token, for example, in accept the Polish invoicing uh, framework, it's called the token, and allow the bank to see the invoices, the new invoices, the receive account payables, issued account receivables, to analyze the data and provide better financial support. So as we can see here, bank is actually providing the technology solution, we call it invoice app, to see the current business situation of, uh, of the SME customer without investing in a very complex and very costly accounting platform. The only challenge, I mean, the only uh, and the main challenge here is to convince the customer, SME customer, to give this consent and to give an access. But this is basically the part of the value proposition. If, for example, you give me an access to your uh, online information about your invoices, we can provide you with the pre-approvals. And then once you will require additional working capital, we can give it without, the, uh, without any delay. So we can automatically prepare the, the product for, uh, for, your, for your business. So there are different types of products. There are different types of the value propositions. How bank can actually uh, convince the SME customer to give an access. And this kind of access can be time limited, can be limited to the certain scope of the transactions, the certain scope of the, the information about the invoice. So many different uh, solutions uh, can, be, can be offered. And in general, as we can see here, connectivity between the invoicing platform, obviously it will be different solution for different countries depends on the model that uh, that will be used for the invoicing in this country allow the bank to has a better view on the current financial and the document situation of the sme customer at the same time can provide the better financial support for the sme customer more real time more time uh, tailor made and uh, uh, based on the uh, pre approvals and based on the real time score at the same time, this solution is way much cheaper than providing online accounting service or providing the external accounting services. At the end of the day, the benefits for the banks are very similar. Okay. So this is the way how I truly believe invoicing in different countries depends on the dynamic, um, how dynamically the situation will change and the roadmap of um, different invoicing platforms in different countries will, will evolve. But the invoicing, in my opinion, will be a great opportunity for the banks to convince more and more SMEs to work closer, to have a better real-time view on their current business situation and to use more and more data for better, uh, to better serve those SME customers in the long term. So that's basically the concept I would like to uh, I would like to pr present today. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, type it on the chat, and I'm here to answer those. Yes, thank you very much, Christoph. Uh, you know, for the for the topics you raised, I think the most important ones at the moment uh, in banking, both both for the open banking, which I think is not monetized much. Uh, by the banks here in the region and also upcoming and coming mandatory e invoicing, which also, uh, yeah, as you gave the examples, uh, we're also thinking about future journeys, future customer journeys already. Uh, yes, before we go to the questions, uh, and I do invite all the attendees to, to type your questions to the chat. We have a first one, which I will do in a second, in a minute. I have, I do have a one comment regarding your slides uh, about the um, advantages of how to convince SMEs or business customers to switch to the um, online banking um, 
solutions integrated with the online banking or mobile banking uh, application. I think this is this is an obvious advantage, and I, I think actually banks are starting the ones that implementing this are really starting to have the advantage um, in the eyes of the customers uh, among the banks, but also among the independent e invoicing and, and online mm -hmm. accounting systems. Because first of all, if we took if you look at the banks, the main like you know. 90% of the banks uh, digitalized the main uh, daily operations uh, business customers are you know are dealing with like transactional data currency exchange opening accounts in local currency in foreign currency etc so this is digitalized by the main part of the banks here in the region so what so now what's what is what is actually this what is the you know the advantage how how banks can be you know distinguished in the eyes of the SME customer if everybody if all the banks have the same digital offer so this value we call it a value added okay. services but for the SMEs and business customers they are they are business mm -hmm. let's say operations you mm -hmm. see invoicing and accounting integrated with the online banking which give integration with the payment first Second, With, uh, yeah. if I if I, if, if sure. I can have a if can I have a, com a comment here? So yeah, it's uh, this distinguisher mm -hmm. and uh, the way how uh, online building online accounting service can distinguish banks X from the other banks on the market is obviously very important if you are talking about the newly established business. Okay? No, because then. For existing ones as well. I'm giving you example. Even me being an SME okay. here, I chose several years ago to use ING uh, banks here in Poland, uh, uh, an open account there, just because they offer the online accounting and e invoicing P course. Uh, anyway, as, as you also mentioned, that e invoicing is becoming mandatory, and every business customer should have, anyway, some of the e invoicing platform to use. Yeah. So if they doesn't yeah. have it at the moment, they should choose the one. But then, even price-wise, this is cheaper mainly on the market. This is cheaper, for example, if the cost of if you use uh, online accounting or accounting services with a human accountant, then mm -hmm. the prices are more or less the same. But then usually this e invoicing platform or the accounting platform itself usually is included in the package for a banking account, for a current account. So on at this amount, so it, it becomes cheaper for the customer to use uh, to use the banking offer, plus it is integrated. You have manual yeah, it, job to do. It, 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 also, it, it also depends on the size of the company and so on. It's completely different if you are talking about the sole traders, so it's like individual running like a small uh, B2B contract, uh, and uh, having like a few invoices per month. But if you are talking about a little bit bigger companies with say 15, 20, 20 different employees, so uh, changing the accounting platform, changing the accounting service provider, it's a complex operation then. Sometimes even for the retail accounts, we say that you most probably will divorce first before you will change your bank. Uh, so for the SME accounts, it's even more complex because uh, you need to inform your clients, you need to inform your, uh, your suppliers and so on and so on. So I, I'm not saying it's not the the, the, the distinguisher. It's not something that uh, the, will not help the bank to be the first bank of choice for the existing and the newly created customers. I'm saying that uh, there will be still a challenge in, in many cases to convince the customer there is, uh, there is a need for such a big effort of changing my accounting service provider if i'm using an external account or if i'm doing my cell book uh, cell booking um because this is this is this is very very sometimes it's quite complex complex operation and um, and at the same time if we look at the invoicing solution and the, how the bank can use the invoicing uh platform which will be active in different countries the main point for such a scenario is that you as a SME, you don't have to change anything. You can still keep your platform, yeah. you can still work with your accountant, you don't need to change anything. The only thing you need to do is actually to decide if I want to allow my bank to see more about my current, let's say, documents situation, my account receivables, account payables. And the challenge and the main goal for a bank is to convince me 
that will that if I give this access, I will get the proper value uh, yeah. from that. So, yeah, but, the, but yeah. Yeah, but I think, uh, you know, um, there will always be a part of customers preferring to upload, uh, you know, uh, invoices in PDF and doing several clicks instead of clicking once to give a consent and let the bank uh, retrieve the That's data. I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously, yes, but at the same time, I, I, I believe and we, we can see that uh, the invoicing is opening actually the new opportunities. And the yeah. most important is how we as uh, technology providers and how banks will actually leverage those opportunities yeah. and uh, the, 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 the key element here is to think from the end user from the SME perspective what is the value we can we can provide because yeah. as you said if I don't see value I will still sure. download my account statement or I will just do the accounting extract and I will upload the manually to my to my banking system but if the value proposition will be there, if the value proposition will be clear, uh, I think many, I truly believe many entrepreneurs, many companies will decide, okay, let's do that. Let's, yeah. let's, let's yeah. be, let's work Waiting closer for, with our bank. I will but, be the first to consent. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Let, let me read the question from Daniel. Thank you very much. Regarding e-invoicing, how many standards will there be in the European Union? Will it be truly possible to aggregate international SME invoicing across European uh, and across Europe and manage them in the one tool? Wow, I think this is the next step. Yeah. This is this is this is uh, this is a very good question, and this is uh, this is similar what we have with the open banking, where sometimes we said that uh, there is as many standards as many banks. Yeah, so every bank has its own standard for exposing uh, PSD two APIs. But okay, with the invoicing. Uh, I would rather say about the models. Okay, so we have one model in Poland, which is centralized model, which um, which allows the the end user, the company, to issue the token and actually distribute the token with their access rights to different parties. We have a different uh, model in France, where actually all the communication needs to go through the certified uh, certified institutions. Uh, the same in uh, in uh, in Croatia, for example. So it's more like a different types of the models and the solution which will be able to on one hand technically connect to those platforms on the other hand to have a required certifications and required uh, licenses approvals from the governmental bodies to be a part of the system so um, therefore uh, it's important to find the partner which is actually able to cover majority or all the countries where the invoicing is already there or will be there in uh, very soon so there are some partners i i also represent one of the companies which 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 this is our core business but uh, I, I i believe the similar as for open banking it will be hard for for bank especially the banks that operates in different countries to uh, to do the integration separately for Poland, separately for Romania, for Croatia, for, for Hungary and so on. Uh, it's, it's important to consider integration and then working with the partner which is actually covering those markets already. Mm -hmm. So uh, different standards, different models, different, uh, different ways how the invoices are exchanged between the supplier and the buyer. So uh, um, yeah, it's not, the, it's not the easy, it's not easy. Unfortunately, there is no like uh, VIDA, uh, VAT in the digital age, doesn't provide any direct standard how those system, how this framework should look like. It's more like uh, what should be possible, but uh, how it will be implemented is actually uh, individual decision of all the European member countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and the first stage I think is to um, yeah to to implement invoicing and this will cover mainly the domestic invoices right so issued for the um, domestic counterparty while the the next level i think will be for the international ones and yeah. and yeah this will go most mostly when all the yeah countries will be and, involved at the first stage for the domestic ones and then we can exchange and more, 
the data. And more and more, more and more businesses are actually the global business or, or pan-European businesses. So let's take a look at the software providers, software as a service provider. So they sell the services to all the countries and uh, they need to be compliant with uh, with all the regulations in different countries. So there is, there is a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. There is a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. How do you see that um, the um, access to the um, this structured e invoicing data on Polish market when uh, when the mandatory e invoicing called XF here will be uh, implemented, uh, whether there will be opportunity to connect directly via the APIs to the tax authorities, for example, we see such examples now in Hungary when they implemented the invoicing several years ago, or there will be op opportunity yet yeah, to use the as you mentioned, partners with data aggregators, mm -hmm. the same model as we see now for the open banking data, for example. How do you see it? Okay, um, if we look at the, in particular, if we look at Poland and CSEF, which is mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately was delayed again, but uh, I, I truly believe we are very close to, 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 that, to that, that date. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so uh, from the technical or uh, connectivity point of view, it's, uh, it's quite, quite easy because uh, it's, uh, it's an API which is offered by the XF platform and you can connect. You don't need to have any specific uh, authorization, specific license for it. You can actually build your connectivity or use the partner which has, uh, which has the connector. Um, obviously, uh, you need to obtain the token from the SME customer. So the SME, the company with the proper VAT identifier needs to um, issue the token which contains the proper privileges that will allow you to download the account receivables data, download the account uh, payables, issue an invoice, and so on, so on. Um, the, but there are also some challenges uh, specifically related to the to maintaining the, the connection, not only the setting up the connection, but also maintaining the connection. Um, from the first implementation of CEF two years ago or one and a half year ago, there were already some changes and we expect there will be a there will be a changes in the future so you also need to uh, ensure and you need to secure the proper capabilities to actually change and uh, and um, align to the to the changes that, that 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 will be expected so you can do it with a partner or you can do it by by monitoring the changes and actually aligning your your connectivity to that Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe, and uh, I'm sure that uh, in case of Poland, the, the way how you can connect to the invoicing platform, it's much easier than in other countries because you can directly connect to the APIs. You the the the, the token that you can obtain uh, actually pro provides you with the full uh, possibility to actually work with the uh, with the invoicing data on behalf of your customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not as easy in other countries, but we will have to discuss it individually, country by country, what are the possibilities, what are the challenges and uh, how we are actually connecting now as a unified force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we can get back to the open banking topic, just for, for one question. Um, what is your opinion on, and vision on, on that, on the fact, I would say, that the banks, uh, at least here in the Central US, Eastern European markets, are not monetizing this uh, open banking much? I'm, t I'm, t I'm saying now about the SME or business customers. For individual customers, of course, the situation is, is better. But if we say about SMEs and business customers in general, uh, now we have six banks in the CU region that's implemented account aggregation in their online mobile banking applications. And also this is very rare when banks uh, ask uh, for a consent actually to retrieve transactional data in their processes for, for example, application for loan or for a factoring. Uh, and and very often ask uh, customers to upload their banking statements um, instead, while the fintechs uh, are using this opportunity very actively and using this, you know, consent tick that uh, asking uh, yeah for a for a consent. Why is that? And um, yeah, what what's your view on that, especially in the coming uh, PSD three already uh, regulation? Yeah, yeah. 
PSR and the PSD3. So first of all, um, at the beginning, and uh, we have uh, as a as a team I'm working with in Poland, which is developing the open banking connections for last uh, almost four years. Um, we see, especially at the beginning, there were several issues uh, with uh, with the SME accounts. So um, the f the main focus of PSD2 on exposing the data was actually on the retail customers, individual customers' data. And in many cases, um, you were able, as a TPP, you were able to uh, perfectly connect to the retail accounts, but it was not so easy for the SME accounts. Yeah. The other the other thing is that the, it's, it's very inconsistent how the SME accounts are, are managed within the bank. So some SME accounts are managed I mean, together with the retail accounts, so the same APIs are used, the same data structures and so on. Some accounts are more treated as a corporate account, okay? And you don't even know where your customer is actually placed, which system, which API is actually uh, supporting the, this account. So there were a lot, of, uh, a lot of issues that some accounts were not supported, some accounts required some additional authorization and so on and so on. Um, so that there were some uh, problems at the at the beginning. It's it's improving over time. We can see it clearly. It's improving, especially we believe that PSR and uh, PSD three will 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 have to improve more and more. Um, the other thing is uh, the the credit models, the scoring models that were developed for the SME customers for the long time and uh, th those are quite conservative so um, fintech company they can develop the scoring model they can uh, increase the risk appetite very quickly because they need to actually behave very fast and be very dynamic how they will adapt to the customer to the to the market to the data scopes they can get and so on it's not it's not very easy with the banking models okay so sometimes if we we were discussing this with the many banks and we were saying, okay, this is the data we can get from the open banking. There are some gaps. There are some things you will not be able to get in a similar way as you can do it from the statement, the regular statement. But this is more real time. This is more convenient for the customer and so on, so on. But the model was not so dynamic and was not so easy to change and it was not able to evolve as quickly as uh, as as required so this is the, this is the second reason the third one is uh, i think it's more like a, a philosophy or a paradigm because we are talking about the cust SME customer who's approaching the bank with a need to have additional financing additional working capital credit line and so on so on and in this case there is a need so the customer will do uh, will provide the statements will provide additional documents and so on so on so it actually provides for all the data for the for the credit model and so on so on if we are talking about more proactive approach where actually the bank is prepared already because they understand better the sme business they understand what are the risks what is the uh, revenue concentration what is the cost structure and so on so on and they are actually waiting for the customer where the need will actually pop up this is where the open banking can be can be can be can be used in more efficient way i can imagine the situation that i give my bank and see uh, my, all my bank accounts and all the transactions and so on if i have a temporary problems with my financial liquidity the bank can say okay we already have a pre-approval for you and this is the working capital we can transfer uh, within the next 15 minutes to your account Okay, because we understand we were able to look at your data for a long time already, and this is what we what we can offer. But it's it's kind of the shift. It it requires more proactive than reactive approach mm -hmm. from the banks. It also requires for the scoring models to be more uh, more dynamic and being more customizable for the different data scopes or and also some gaps uh, that can that can happen but we see more and more open banking is used for the uh, micro lending i'm talking about the retail customers mm -hmm. and i believe i i also see that 
this will evolve more and more to the SME, SME, SME lending as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, will be one final question from my side. Uh, yeah, I do see a question from Mustafa, but it does not much concern the topic uh, of our today's webinar. And we do have some uh, recording from the digitalization of SME lending and yeah, some regulations should come in place to yeah, for non-cash transactions for businesses and then um, and then this topic of uh, invoicing and open banking is becoming relevant. Um, so what is your um, what is your advice to the banks and to the other financial institutions in the context actually of the preparations for the PSD3 and mandatory invoicing coming both compliance wise and also you know in the context of the future customer journeys? Okay, um, let's start with the e-invoicing. I, as, as I said before, I think this is the great opportunity to to, to collaborate in a in a more efficient way the, with the SMEs. Um, on one hand, we can uh, try to offer the solutions because there will be a moment that, uh, in time where every SME will have to check. Okay my accounting system is it ready my accountant is he ready or is she ready for for invoicing am i able to uh, to approve the invoices before it will be it will be booked so there are different different scenarios where actually the the sme customers will be looking at okay first contact point will be accountant or accounting service provider but also the bank how the bank can help uh, help with this so first let's take a look what will be what will be the list of questions what will be the, the, the what will what will be the most important questions from the sme perspective and try to find the way how bank can actually solve some of those challenges solve or some of those um, uh, questions second thing is um, to understand how invoicing and the structured data which is behind every every uh, structure invoice can actually improve or even replace our existing processes. Good example is, for example, invoice discounting or uh, we call factoring. So uh, instead of providing the invoices, which needs to be scanned, which needs to be analyzed by some, some um, dedicated engine or mechanism, we can provide the data in the unified format and we can automate more and more how the, how the, those invoices are scored and how those invoices are actually monitored okay so invoicing will help the bank to automate several different uh, processes including onboarding including monitoring transactions including factoring including credit scoring and so on so on and last but not least nothing will happen without the explicit consent from the from the sme customer so the most important question will be how to convince SMEs to give a give us as a bank give us an access to their invoices invoices and how we can actually uh, provide the value proposition behind that so this is this is the most important question okay all right thank you very much thank you very much thank you, thank you very much all the attendees yeah we are running of the time and closing the webinar thank you very much and see you next time both online thank and you Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.